Problem number nine. Parallel plate capacitor in air has a plate separation of two centimeters and a plate area of 25 centimeters squared. Plates are charged to a potential of 250 volt and disconnected from the source. All right, disconnected from the source means that the battery locks in the potential difference, and then when you take it away, they don't have a, they don't have a, uh, the charges don't have a path to flow back, so they stay there. It's kind of like if you have a diaphragm, hydraulic analogy, and then you isolate the diaphragm so that you can turn the pump off and it doesn't matter. The pressure is locked in, if you will. The plates are charged to a potential difference of 250, disconnected from the source. The capacitor is then immersed in distilled water. All right, so this is going to get into dielectrics. Assume the liquid is an insulator. Okay, so determine the charge on the plates before and after the immersion. Okay, we can do this. So I'm going to draw a picture. Oh. And nope. There we go. Now copy paste. Oh. All right. So here's our plates, parallel plate capacitor. I'm going to write up a formula. The formula will be Q uh, capacitance equals Q over V. It always is hard for me because capacitance and uh, Q both have the same sound, so it really throws me off. All right, determine the charge. So let's see. We don't know the capacitance, but you should probably know it for a um, parallel plate capacitor. Capacitance. Let's see if they give us some cheat sheet here. Bam, right there, top one. Epsilon naught A over D. All right. So capacitance will equal epsilon naught A over D. So this epsilon naught, and I'll discuss it a little bit later, only applies for when it's air, or space, vacuum. Air is pretty much vacuum. So what we want to do is find the charge, Q. So we're going to use these formulas. We know epsilon naught because it's constant. We know the distance between the two, D. We know the area. And we know the voltage. So this is a terrible boardsmanship. Move that guy over here, multiply by V. There we go. So now we got Q. So we're going to do 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12th times area, which is 25 centimeters squared. That's going to be uh, times 25 times 10 to the negative 4th, because we need to convert it to meters squared, times the voltage, which is 250. divided by the distance between the two, which is 2 times 10 to the negative tenth. Divided by 2 times 10 to the negative tenth. Ooh, by tenth I mean 2. All right, and this should give us our charge on each plate. That seems awfully large. Ah. There we go. That seems right. I'm going to call that 2.77 times 10 to the negative tenth. Oh, they want it in pico, so I'll call it 277. 277 pico coulombs. All right, so now going back to real thinking in life. So we've got these pos positive charges over here. Not really positive charges, there's the absence of negative charges, but I'm going to call them positive and pretend. So we have positive charges over here, negative charges over here. And what we're going to do is then submerge it in water. Oh, yes. Mad interactive skills right here. Bam. Nope. Immersed in water. So these charges are basically stuck on there because it's disconnected from the battery. So these charges are going to stay there no matter what. So the charges are not going to change. So the answer, after we immerse in water, is still going to be 277 picocoulombs, because the number of charges, positive and negative, are going to stay the same. I really don't actually like that blue, so that guy's going to go away. All right, so now we need to determine the capacitance and potential. Okay, so the capacitance is going to change. 
and the potential difference will also change. So the capacitance, so we can do the first one pretty easy because we know the charges. We already have charges, we already calculated it. Now we're going to divide it by the voltage in air. Nope. Ah. Nope. What they're looking for is just the final. Okay. So we're going to use this formula right here. So as a quantitative example, so what we're supposed to use is epsilon. Does it say epsilon here? This says epsilon. So an epsilon, it's not really epsilon. It's actually, or it's not epsilon not, it's actually epsilon, uh, was it relative? And epsilon, whatever constant is, epsilon not. So what we're going to do then is rewrite this. We're going to say that the capacitance for a parallel plate capacitor is epsilon r times epsilon not times A over D. Make sure I got that guy right. Yes, if I'm not A over D. Where R, so if this is air, uh, epsilon R would be um, 1. But we're not dealing with air now, we're dealing with water. So we're going to get a new capacitance. So then, let's look up what this new capacitance is. All right, so this is relative permi permittivity. Go down to water. This is all in Celsius, so 20 is about what room temperature is. I'm going to assume that's what they're using. And we're going to use 80.1. So I'm going to do 80.1. There we go. And then I'm going to do, kind of cheat here, capacitance air because we already calculated this guy right here, or at least it's easy to calculate it. So it'll be epsilon naught A over D, yep. So it'll be the previous thing we did. We'll take out the 250 volts. And this gives us our original capacitance. Seems reasonable because it's in picofarads. And now we're going to multiply it by 80.1. So our 8.85 times the negative 12th multiplied by 80.1 and now we're going to have 8.86 times 10 to the negative 11th which will be 88.6 pico ah, nope they don't want pico they don't want pico at all 8.86 times 10 to the negative 11th. There we go. Now we need to, now that we know the capacitance, determine the uh, voltage. So now the voltage is going to be different. Uh, the energy required to move in a charge from one side to the other will change based on the uh, dielectric we put in. Um, you might think that, wow, this is creating or losing energy. No, because actually you're gonna, there's going to be an energy change when you're putting the dielectric in. It's not like you're just dripping water in there. There'll be an energy change when you, put the, when you submerge it. Um, it might not be a lot, so you wouldn't necessarily notice it by uh, feeling it, but, but when you put in the dielectric, you're getting, a, uh, you're getting a change in energy. So it's not like this is free energy here. So in case you were curious. All right, so we have the standard capacitance equals Q over V and so therefore V will be Q over C. We just found the capacitance here and we know the uh, um, charge from up here which is 277 times 10 to the negative 12. So I am going to piggyback off my previous calculations. Nope, there we go. 277, 277 times 10 to the negative 12th divided by, and this should give us a reasonable number like, you know, maybe 100, 3, that works too, I'll, I'll believe that, so 3.13, okay, 
3.13. Hmm. So we reduced it from 250 volts to 3.13, which makes sense because 250 divided by 80.1 is 3.13. Interesting. All right. Determine the change in energy of the capacitor. All right. So the first capacitor, we're going to use energy equals 1 half CV squared. So let's see. Do we have the capacitance of the first one? So I, the way I would write this out will be capacitance initial, which is, I'm just going to redo this, 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12th times, let's see, we have an area, area which is 25 times 25 times 10 to the negative fourth. divided by the distance separated, it should be divided by 2 times 10 to the negative second. Yep, that looks right. 1.1 times 1.1 picofarads. Okay? 1.1, I'll call these picofarads. And times 10 to the negative 12. There we go. Up, up, up. Then voltage initial is 250, got that. And then capacitance final is 8.86 times 10 to the negative 11th. Look like a two year old drawing with a crayon. And V final is 3.13. Okay? So to do this, I'll do 0.5 times, and then we'll do 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12th, 1.1 times 10 to the negative 12th, times voltage, which is 250 squared. Now copy, minus, and this time, and I'll just rewrite that. Might be easier. So we'll do 8.86 times 10 to the negative 11. 8.86 times 10 to the negative 11 times 3.13 squared. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Let's see what happens. And we have 3.4 joules. 3.4 times 10 to the negative 8 joules. Ah. So I'm going to say 34 nanojoules. 34 nanojoules. Tell me the change in energy of the capacitor. Yep. And that is how you do these capacitor problems. So that's how you do dielectrics. So all the time before when I've been using epsilon naught, what I've really been meaning was epsilon naught times epsilon r, where there's a specific epsilon r for everything. Um, air is about one, vacuum is one, and everything else you probably have to look up. All right, sound good? That's it for this week. See you next week.